all of you. I would like to say thank you and we acknowledge your presence. And uh, I'd like to apologize to the media for the late start of the engagement. And I'll always go to the two people that will always come late. I'm sorry. So I'll not mention their names <laughs> for the purpose of the news. But I will say this, um, we are really, really, really grateful to all the stakeholders. And we have to acknowledge the presence of the security service of the country. And of course, uh, with the most consistent partners we have had in terms of tree planting and cleansing exercise is Hamza Barracks, Gambia Fire Rescue Service. They have had the longest partnership with the CityLink Austin Banjul um, uh, um, uh, City Link Austin Banjul for the past 15 20 years, and of course, we have the Navy and of course, our neighbors, the State Guard, that have been always doing us free patrol on Tuesdays and on Thursdays in the morning and in the afternoon. Although recently they are not very active, but we will still say thank you for doing that, and we hope um, uh, that continues because security is paramount for us at the beach and is fundamental for the fact that these trees cost money and the human resources that is invested on these um, plants really, really, really is huge. And we will appreciate um, uh, if the security patrol continues. And also we would say thank you to the Crab Island Women Gardeners, the youth groups and all security um, sectors that are present here. But first of all, I'd say thank you to the councillors of Banjul and their ward development committees for always also taking part in the annual tree planting exercise and we appreciate the efforts and we also say thank you very much we would have an engagement that is to center on what is next and how do we take care of the project and how do we take care of the beach when uh, um, the project faces out but before we do that um, uh, i'd like to um, uh, welcome the presence of the deputy mayor uh, the CEO of Banjul City Council and of course the representative from the European Union, the National Assembly member uh, for Banjul North and of course my project coordinator and of course the senior BCC management including Uncle Max. So we would um, uh, highly um, uh, appreciate your efforts and of course uh, to the media, thank you very much for being there consistently since 2020 August to date. So just to give you a rundown and a recap, the project, the greening component actually started in uh, 2020. 20 August 26th and uh, from then okay so the greening component of the project started in August 2020 and it was on the 26th of August here at the Nafartiti with the former um, EU representative Alita Lajas and of course the former deputy mayor Omar Jose Toure and uh, from then and counting to date, we have planted 4,500 coconut trees successfully. And today we have uh, successfully done another thousand and cleaned the beach. So thank you very much and a round of applause to all of you that are here to ensure Banjul is protected and Banjul is sustained. And that being said, the project did not only stop there. We would always say one reason and it is evident and it's clear. We don't need to ask questions. This greening component is by far the most successful greening component that Gambia has ever a witness and my colleagues in the greening industry and the climate change advocacy would always say how did you do it in Banjul how we did it in Banjul is that we have a unique model and that unique model is we don't plant and leave we grow trees we nurture trees we protect them and that being said from the get-go we had a team of 35 gardeners who were employed and are paid on a monthly basis to water this um, coconut trees to trim the coconut trees and to also clean the beach but also we have a team of um, 15 security personnel who also alternate or rotate on shift. For the fact that we have major challenges at the Banjul Beach, the hunting groups are one of our major challenges and threats in terms of uh, the hunting societies during Christmas. That is also one challenge we have. And we have invited them as part of our stakeholders for a dialogue, for an engagement, for a tree planting exercise. And at some point, we even have a special session with them where we donated most of the hunting groups, about 45 hunting groups in Banjul, cash to ensure they don't come back to the beach just to um, destroy um, what have been planted and another key sector which is also present here is uh, the Banjul Sport Committee. We have also had engagement with the Banjul Sport Committee for they are also a threat to the beach. We understand that Banjul is um, handicapped in terms of facilities for footballing activities or sporting activities and most of the time they rely on KG5 Gambia High and Makati Square we all know is not functioning so they cannot use it. So most of these football clubs where they have major Nawetan teams around 18 or more 
and they all need to come and train at the beach. So we have factored that in and that is why we always ensure that we create space in between the coconuts to serve as football fields and training ground for the, secu um, for the football clubs so they do not actually um, tamper with the coconuts that have been planted. And uh, we also um, ensure that there is, a, there is an engagement with all the football um, groups where we organize um, an inter-beach um, uh, soccer competition as part of that advocacy and sensitization, as part of visibility and also advocacy for the greening component. But that being said, um, uh, what makes us unique again about this project is that we are one project that has created toilet facilities for the beach and we have three to four toilet spaces across the beach. We have also ensured that there is water facilities facility and availability of water with one constraint around the cemetery where we have low um, pressure or voltage of water that is affecting us as well in terms of watering these plants and that is also another challenge that we seek to address as stakeholders. How do we help solve? And uh, moving on as well, there are water tanks across the beach to ensure that when there is shortage of water, there is a reserve that we are able to use to water the plants. So that being said, all these things falls under the project and that is why we are able to um, actively count that 4,546 coconut trees are healthy and are alive and it begins from the stretch of the state house to um, uh, the Banyul Cemetery where we have started planting today. And we hope that these thousand trees we have planted today survives and added and adds to the number so we are able to have 5,500 coconut trees. So that being said, I'd like to say thank you once again. And first off, I would also um, have the project coordinator, Mr. Usman Job, to give a statement. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alamin. Now, I would like to extend my Okay, now my appreciation to every stakeholder that is involved in this activity. All. First, I would like to say, okay, now greetings to the deputy mayor, who is definitely representing the Lord Mayor of Banyul. Okay, now the councillors, right now the CEO of Banyul City Council, the okay representative. Okay, now of the EU, okay, now in Banyul, okay, now the State Guard, the, all the securities, the Red Cross, the women, the youth, uh, Banyul Youth Organization, Banyul Sports Organization, all protocols duly and respectfully observed. Now, this is about, okay, now the coconuts in the beach, which we have spent a lot of fortune in order right now to maintain them this is put here so that we can we can save the beach from sea erosion and that the beach will be environmentally friendly and not only that it can also serve as an economic okay now, potential for those who are working here okay, however this greening aspect is of okay now three aspects we have the we have the coconut in the beach. We also have the okay now the inner city, and also okay now the mangroves. If you can see that in the inner city there are a lot of plants that have been put in the inner city, and also the mangroves have also been planted. Okay, okay now at the sea, there at the coast. Now these are things that can help. Right now, the city, we have an island that we need to preserve. Banjul is our only city, as far as the Gambia is concerned, and we are destined to stay here. And not only us, but our children and our grandchildren, we have to make sure that we have taken care of this city, okay, now for them. However, there are, in fact, as far as Banyul is concerned, I could remember when I, was, when I was a child, a young boy. In fact, we used to see quite a lot of birds in the city. Especially, okay, now there is one that I always, that I always remember, but nowadays I am not seeing much of it. That is, okay, now the, all right, now the bishop bird, of which we call, okay, Pichisering. It's a very nice bird, very nice and small bird. And also now the combating things. Where are they? 
Where are they? We are missing them. We are missing them, the kacho kachos. We are missing them. Why? Because now the environment, okay, now because now the place is not environmentally okay, not conducive okay, for them to live in. But let us please plant these trees so that they can come back. They will come back. If we take care of the environment where they, okay, now they can have a good habitat. And we can do that. We can do it and we will do it. No matter, I know, I know there are challenges. And there is also another thing too. That is now the plants that we put in the inner, okay, now in the inner city. We are having problems, we are having challenges with them. There are goats roaming in the city, goats and sheep roaming in the city and destroying these expensive plants. We are tired every time, okay, now driving them. Something must have to be done in order to get rid of these goats roaming in our city because they are destroying the plants that we put there. And also now these coconuts, we know that during the festive period, okay, now during the Christmas, we see young hunting societies, okay, now would come here and then cut the leaves of these precious plants. And that would, okay, now deter these plants from growing. That also have to be stopped. Let us all put hands on deck. Let us all be committed and take ownership so that we will preserve these plants. And, okay, now moreover, okay, now I would also like to say a big thank you to all right now the milling machine and also the the milling machine in Banyul they are also part of the stakeholders and they are also very much committed in helping us okay achieve our goals okay now much more through the okay now through the honorable member of parliament of Banyul North okay now, honorable thank you very much okay for your commitment we have seen your contribution now okay now once again I would like every stakeholder, the NEA, the Parks and Wildlife, okay, now department, and every stakeholder, all right, forestry, this is ours, this is your responsibility. Please take ownership as far as these okay, activities are concerned, these plants. I would like to thank you very much, okay, now once again, and wish you all the best. Thank you. Production. Assalamu alaikum to each and everyone present here especially the, the stakeholders from the EU, Gambia, um, the Banjul City Council, under the leadership of the Deputy Mayor of Banjul, who is here to deputize Hawashib, the Mayor of Banjul, the CEO, that is the Chief Executive Officer of the Banjul City Council, the Austin Banjul City Link Coordinator, the advisor to the Council, Mr. Makumasane, the councillors, especially my own very councillor, who has been to SMJT, the councillor for Kampama Ward, and any other councillor present here, nominated and elected. I am indeed honoured to stand here today to witness such another, stone mile, another milestone achievement in terms of the Banyul Austin EU funded project, and to be more specific, the greening component of the project. Why I am saying this is because Today we have seen a lot of improvement, especially when it comes to the beach. The beach is one of the one key thing that was discussed at the initial stage of this important project. And we believe today, as Banjulians or as city dwellers, we will be so proud to see that the initiative that is the greening initiative in the beach is something that we should be proud of. And to be honest, like Mrs. Kamara have said before, or Ms. Kamara rather have said before, um, the beach has a history. In year 2000, the Banjul beach was not like this. But today we are so glad, like she said, to see that we have transformed. And if I say we have, I mean the city dwellers through the city council, under the leadership of how was it the mayor of Banjul, have transformed the Banjul beach in order to protect the city of Banjul, which is indeed very laudable. So in that regard, I will also want to encourage the staff that are being employed to take care of the beach, especially the current slogan, because in Banjul, 
we don't do tree planting anymore. We do tree growing. And we are very serious in that because we believe in climate action. And in doing so, we must try by all means to nurture all the trees that we plant in order to grow them to become something very productive so that at the end of the day, we as a city of Banjul will be able to mainstream climate change. So in that regard, I am indeed honored to speak on behalf of the MPs of Banjul and also on behalf of the people that we represent in the city of Banjul and beyond to say that we are very proud of Banjul, especially Banjul City Council, and also to thank the European Union for fully funding such an initiative and a very big thank you also to Austin City. Thank you very much. Deputy Mayor uh, of Baljo City Council, I also would like to acknowledge the presence of the National Assembly Member for Banjo North and also our friend from the EU, uh, Mr. Tariq, the advisor of Council, the Honorable World Councillors of Banjo City Council here present and their respective World Committees here present, the Director of Planning and Development of Council and other senior staff of Council here present. But of course, uh, I want to also recognize the presence of the Crab Island Women Gardeners. I also want to acknowledge the efforts of the security services, the Hamsa Barracks, and also the Gambia Fire and Rescue Service, but also the staff from the Clinton Service Department, and also Mr. Jeng Mbuguma and the team uh, for their effort, efforts. We have been informed that uh, since 2020, uh, this project, which is the greening component of the project, has kick-started. So it took a lot of work and efforts to be here to see the efforts that have started since 2020. Now, this greening component is a very significant part of the EU project. And as we gather here to plant trees, we should understand that uh, Planting trees will help to protect the coastal line of Banjul, but most importantly, it will help to prevent um, erosion. And therefore, as we gather here, it is important we take note of our responsibilities, but also we also want to recognize the efforts of the European Union, uh, which is a very important and a fundamental partner for Banjul City Council, but also for Austin. And then, on that note, I think I, it is fair to acknowledge the efforts of the Banyul Austin project coordinator, Mr. Job, uh, Two of his colleagues, Mr. Jonas and Peter, are not here, but it's also important to appreciate and acknowledge their efforts as well. Uh, having said that, I will stop here and then uh, thank you so much for your efforts, for your contributions. We look forward to working with all of you. We also want to thank the media for your role, the important role that you have played from the beginning of this project until today. Thank you so much. Uh, you Ambassador Corrado Pampaloni um, and the Head of Cooperation Enrica Pelacani, my colleague Laura who is a project manager um, representing the EU today and thank, thanks a lot for, for giving us the space for a few words. Um, Deputy Mayor, um, City of Banjul, um, all Banjul City Councillors, uh, CEO, City Council, um, Member of Parliament, Banjul North, Momodu Lamin, the security guard, uh, the advisor to the Municipal Council, the Red Cross Society, the, uh, the project team, Usman Anet, also the project team, uh, which can't be here from the Ostende City, uh, Peter and Jonas. Um, Thanks a lot for, for uh, inviting us and for completing successfully this project. Um, today we have been uh, joined forces in, in planting and cleaning the beach and you have been able to, to share with me the successes and also the challenges during the project. I think without any doubt it's a highly relevant project from an environmental point of view. But you have also managed to, to include the communities to resolve that there's not a conflict of interest with the uh, soccer uh, community playing football, um, with other aspects of, of cultural activities. So I think it has been a, uh, also the success rate, survival rate of, of the planting of uh, uh, around 80% 
is a, is a very big indicator of, of success. So let me not make too many words, but just congratulate you for, for conducting a project successfully under not easy circumstances. Um, and uh, thanks for, for uh, having this space for the EU to make a few remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Of the Red Cross um, in Banjul, those from the Hamza Barracks, and all of those that Annette, who had um, spoken earlier, had mentioned. Um, we appreciate your coming here. Of course, as the Deputy Mayor, I stand here to speak on behalf of the Lord Mayor of Banjul, who um, is out of town, but I am here representing her, as well as the entire city council. My Chief Executive Officer at the council had already spoken much, so I wouldn't um, um, lengthen my speech here today. But of course, um, as earlier speakers alluded to, this project started, this um, coconut tree um, planting started sometime back in 2020. So to come back here and see that almost, you know, all of the coconuts that had been planted since then are growing and some are already um, um, producing some um, coconuts and all of that is, is, a, is a huge um, pleasure to um, witness. So it shows that, like um, Annette said earlier, we're not just planting coconuts, but we're growing them. Um, there's a huge difference in that. That is why we're ensuring that they, uh, they um, grow up to this level that they're in. Um, of course, um, earlier speakers spoke about the economic um, potential it has and um, the way that it is protecting against soil erosion and all of that. So moving forward, um, we all know that um, this project, the implementation stage, would um, very soon um, elapse. So we're discussing about sustainability of it. So um, which is why it's important um, for the securing of this um, place. The Banyul City Council would um, take up its responsibility seriously and also partner with other institutions that it has to, to make sure that these um, plants that are, these beautiful trees, coconut trees that are being planted here are well protected. Because um, earlier speakers had alluded to the fact that those that are doing masquerade displays and some of those that are coming to the beach to play football do usually harm the um, trees. So this is where intervention is needed the most. Last time we were planting trees, we also spoke about the stray animals. So these are some of the areas that we will definitely look into to make sure that we sustain what had been achieved here. So um, I think it's also important to mention that all of these um, projects were, of course, um, generously sponsored by the European Union, and we um, thank them on behalf of the people of Banjul, but also um, acknowledge and appreciate um, this, is, this is important to do every time that um, we talk about this project, the beneficial partnership between the Banjul City Council and the Austin City Council. I think um, it is a classic example of what two sister cities can benefit um, when they come together, each other. So um, we acknowledge um, all the efforts that they had made, our friends at the Austin City, and also um, acknowledge, like the CEO did, the efforts of the project coordinator, who is Teacher Job, as well as um, his um, peers, Jonas and Peter, who are not here today with us. So moving forward, um, in conclusion, I would just have like to reassure the commitment of the Banjul City Council towards um, its people of whom um, we were mandated or elected to serve. So um, this beach is one classic example. And then um, we mentioned the Crab Island, of which when it's ready, it would have a lot of facilities that would benefit the people of Banjul. There's another greening component within the inner city as well. Um, and before concluding, I would also acknowledge the great efforts of the people at Dog Banjul through uh, Mungu Majeng. I think they have made a brilliant effort. Um, I'm also encouraging the citizens of Banjul to ensure that because um, to sustain what we had achieved here, everybody needs to participate, whether in, within the inner city or in the beach or elsewhere. Um, we have invested a lot of millions into um, making sure that this is a reality. So to the residents of Banjul, I am appealing to everybody on behalf of the Lord Mayor and the City Council 
to make sure that they take very good care of what had been um, um, planted, whether within the inner city and in the beach. Because it is, it is for our own protection and it is for our own good. So collectively, we can maintain Banjul to be um, a very future-proof city, like um, the, the, we put it in the EU project. So um, I thank you all once again and have a great day.